this piece is by uh, Vittoria Hegia he uh, da Silva of the uh, Genido Inumida website. Or you know, we'll say, uh, I don't know if it's a group or an organization or some type of, uh, I don't know, NGO. I'm not sure. I have to look into that. But anyway, this is what she wrote. Black women are the Brazilians who most consider themselves feminists among the women who declared adherence to the political cause. Among men, almost half of the practitioners of evangelical religions declare support for the movement. These are some of the results of the first Datafolia survey directed at the theme released in April of 2019. The women who declare themselves to be feminists represent 47% of the black women, 37% of brown women, and 36% of the white women surveyed in the study. Overall, 38% of Brazilians consider themselves feminists, while 52% of men say they support feminism. Now, just to point out, these numbers are from 2019. So when we say 47% of black women or negatives or paretas or 37% of brown women, meaning pardas, 36% of white women, mulheres brancas, these numbers have probably gone up because if the number of women identifying as feminists went up from 2019 to 2022, from 39 to 51%, this means that most likely almost it's, it's probably guaranteed that the number of black women identifying themselves as feminists had to have gone up also. Um, these two studies were three years apart. So I don't have a recent, I could probably find this, but still the, the point is still, uh, it still needs to be pointed out that, uh, you see that of the women in Brazil, uh, the majority who identify themselves or the larger parcel that consider themselves to be feminist are black women. Now, interesting here, I've always pointed out that black and brown, which means preto e pardo in Brazil, are usually, you know, their statistics on whatever topic tend to be very close together because these are the two disadvantaged groups, groups which Afro-Brazilian act activists like to say are part of the same black community. But in this particular case, it seems that the women who are considered brown or pardos, pardo women, are actually closer to white women in terms of their declaration of support or def defining themselves as feminists. You see the difference here being 47 with black women, 37 with brown women, and 36 with, with white women. So it seems the pardas here, the brown or mixed women, seem to be closer to white women in terms of their rates of defining themselves as feminists. Intriguing. If on the one hand, we live in a more conservative and reactionary moment, speaking of uh, the Jair Bolsonaro administration, uh, where people have considered him a, a far right wing extremist who's been president for about four years, uh, he'll be leaving office, uh, provided there's no insurrection in Brazil. Some people seem to think there's going to be something that pops off in Brazil before this transition of power to the recently elected Lula da Silva, who was the president of Brazil from 2003 to 2010. Have to wait and see what's going to happen. But anyway, again, if on the one hand, we live in a more conservative and reactionary moment, the survey shows that we had transformations in the perception and identification with feminism. The number of black women who identify themselves as feminists shows that at the least feminism is not rejected within this group. Uh, Flavia Mateos Hills, a researcher and doctor in sociology at the University of Sao Paulo, tells Genital Enumero. Dr. Fordia surveyed 2086 Brazilians with a minimum age of 16. There were 1,095 women and 991 men in 130 cities across the country on April 2nd and 3rd of 2019. The margin of error is two percentage points higher or lower. For heels, the growth and expansion of black feminism, which is a strand of feminism that discusses, that discusses gender and racial issues, is due to affirmative action that has allowed black women to reach universities, have more access to information and group together in mobilization collectives. Black feminists have appropriated technology and communication tools such as social networks, which also enables a greater diffusion of the discussions most taking place within the peripheries of major cities and the black population. It is also important to highlight collect collectives such as, or collectivities such as like poetry slams, hip hop and funk culture, 
which have been asserting themselves in terms of gender and affect mainly black women who are mostly part of this social stratum, she highlights. Another survey conducted, conducted on the International Women's Day, March 8th in 2017 and released exclusively by genital and numeral, again, meaning gender and number, already revealed that most protesters saw the cause of black women as a priority for the feminist movement. Another group of women, and I'm not sure, this might be from um, the Black Women's March. Marsha, that's Moulier, that's negative. It's been several, you know, since its first March, I think was in 2015. Anyway, among evangelical men, support for feminism is significant and reaches 45%. Among neo-Pentecostals from churches such as the Universal of the Kingdom of God and the Assembly of God, this rate rises to an astonishing 48%. Some leaders of these segments are notorious detractors of the movement, such as Silas Malafaya, uh, pastor of the Assembly of God, and Marcos Feliciano, a uh, congressman and member of the same church. Also among the men who declare support for the feminist movement, the proportion of black and brown people is higher, 55 and 54% per, respectively than that of whites. According to the researcher, there is a significant difference in how black feminism deals with black men and how feminism in general deals with men in general, which could explain the difference in support. Uh, according to this same uh, researcher, black feminism has never been radicalized towards the figure of men precisely because of the experience of oppression common to the racial group. Although it has strong critiques, is autonomous and tackles the gender problem within the black community. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that from this short paragraph here, I see that they're trying to make a distinction between how feminism as a whole deals with men versus how black feminism deals with black men. And just in my experiences in, say, the last four years uh, in Brazil with some of the social networks of, of black Brazilian men, they were pointing out all, all sorts of problems that they had with, you know, the black feminist movement. Um, there is a website, blog or online magazine that I've, I like to check in with occasionally. And this group is composed of both black Afro-Brazilian men and women, and both of them talk about the problems inherent within the uh, some of the agendas within black feminism. They have uh, clearly pointed out how the, it seems like black feminists are throwing black men under the bus. This is I'm, I'm going to get into that because when I discovered some of these people, some of their work, I was like, well, this is the other side of the coin that also needs to be revealed. Um, a lot of good material that they put out over the last few years and this is what I'm saying. It was a mixture of black Brazilian men and women who were speaking on this. <laughs> there were several articles where I says, wow, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, put some of this stuff up. A couple of their articles I actually have on the blog right now. And I'll have to get into that because they take issue um, with some of the talking points of black feminism. Um, I remember some years ago, and I'm going to discuss this in an upcoming video. I just remember uh, one of the most prominent Afro-Brazilian feminist uh, in the movement right now. And I saw, I haven't been able to find this magazine cover since then, but there was a magazine cover where she talked about the toxic masculinity of homens negros or, or black men, black men in Brazil. And so we know how this term toxic masculinity has taken over the internet over the last, I don't know what, five years maybe. But like I said, whatever narrative or speaking point there is, there's always a flip side. And that that's why all of these things need to be debated. We can't just take, you know, buzzwords that come out and automatically assume that they are absolutely true without scrutinizing everything. That's that's just the way, you know, a debate should go. So anyway, keep going on. This is a protest. Uh, as I said, uh, Black Lives Matter, both the phrase and some of the leaders of Black Lives Matter had actually, you know, been hanging out in Brazil. I remember that a few years ago. And, you know, the Portuguese translation of Black Lives Matter is Vidas Negras in Portum. So this was a, a protest in Sao Gonçalo, and it was against the, 14, the death of a 14-year-old Black youth named jo João Pedro. He was killed in his home during a police operation. This is something that it constantly happens in Brazil. Like I said, I could create a whole blog just talking about police operations that lead to death of mostly uh, Afro-Brazilian males, right? 
Okay, so the researcher further points out that Black women have fought for a greater politicization of Black men with regard to gender hierarchies and domestic violence. Gradually, this has generated greater awareness and the construction of more recent autonomous debates, such as the discussion of Black masculinity. You know, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> Some of the stuff that I'm seeing with Black masculinity is just really questionable. But that's that's my opinion. And obviously, this is you know, these are some, the black Brazilian men's group that I was uh, part of the network for a while. These are, you know, these are some of the things that they were talking about. Um, like I said, I have to cover that in a future article because it leaves, you know, it's 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 something that needs to be debated. You know, widening widening of the term black masculinity and making it plural uh, black masculinities. When you see some of the stuff that I've seen, it just makes me wonder, like, where is this going? You know, many people have argued that in the feminist movement, they only accept men who don't act like men. And some of the articles that I've seen that discuss black mis masculinities seems to bear this out. But that's another topic. I get into that another time. So according to Data Fordia, nine of 10 Brazilians totally or partially agree that violence against women has increased in the last year. Black people are the ones who most disagree that the laws in Brazil are adequate to protect women. 61% against, 57% uh, of whites, and 55% of browns. Hmm. Again, we see this difference between the 61% of blacks and 55% of browns. You know, it's, it's a bigger margin of difference between blacks and browns than blacks and whites. And usually, you know, black and brown are usually you know, they, on a lot of issues, they, they actually agree on a lot of stuff. This is why statistically, you know, again, uh, Afro-Brazilian movement has always said blacks and browns are part of the same group. But every now and then you're going to find something that shows that there's a bit of a difference between these. these. I'm not going to say two communities because I've said this before. You can't separate black and brown in Brazil as you do in the U.S. because in the U.S. it represents two different cultures, two different origins of two different groups of people. Whereas in Brazil, blacks and browns, most black, preto means black, and most browns in Brazil, well, I'll say a large percentage of them also are of African ancestry. And as this is all happening in Brazil, they all are part of the same culture. So it's not the same division of black and brown in Brazil because they're all Brazilians, you know, basically of the same blood. So. If public policies on the one hand generate more debate and protective resources regarding violence, they will not necessarily objectively reduce the aggressions to which these women are subjected, subjected says Heels. The black population, women in particular, feel very vulnerable in relation to the state due to institutional racism. The different treatment between blacks and whites makes women, makes black women feel these differences and all of these dimensions of discrimination, she adds. Over the decade, between 2007 and 2016, the homicide rate for black women grew by 23% in the face of a 3% increase in the rate for non-black women, according to information from Data Seuss uh, Mortality Information System. So anyway, uh, another piece that I wanted to explore this topic again, there's going to be many more that's coming up because... Some of the same debates that people are having like on YouTube and online and social networks that you find in the United States are some of these same discussions are happening in Brazil. As I said, uh, a number of my contacts in Brazil are pointing out the fact that it shows that it seems that a lot of Americans don't really understand what's going on in Brazil. They just assume they know. And, you know, as my, my channel grows, I'm going to get into, you know, bringing some of these voices on so they can talk about how they feel. Uh, in terms of the interpretations of what Brazilian women are like, you know, from people who don't live in Brazil, right? So anyway, I'm going to end this piece right here. Uh, definitely want to hear what you thought, what you're thinking about this piece. Again, it's called uh, Black Men and Women Are Closer to Feminism Than White People in Brazil, According to a Survey. So I'm going to end this video here. Uh, definitely you know, give me thumbs up if you like this article. Um, feel free to leave some comments, spark a conversation. Consider subscribing to this channel. I'm going to keep bringing these videos out and I'm going to keep continue to try to diversify uh, some of the topics that I, I discuss. Um, 
definitely subscribe, you know, share this video, uh, click on the notification bell so that you get some of my videos when they first come out, you'll be among the first to see it. So with that said, um, I'm going to end it here and hope to see you all in the next video.